No Cap Podcast, episode number three, live in five, four, three, two, one. Welcome back to the No Cap Podcast. I'm your host, James Cap. Alongside me is co-host Mitch McCrone, cameraman and producer Logan Lewandowski behind all the equipment as usual. We have a special guest on today, OSU Buckeyes, 90,000 followers on Instagram, the largest non-affiliated Ohio State page on the platform. Um, Anthony, I want to thank you a lot for coming on today. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, guys, no problem. So what we're going to do today, we're going to talk a little bit about the Michigan-Ohio State rivalry over the past two decades, Ohio State's domination, and we're just going to go with the flow. Should be good. Should be a good conversation. But to start off, um, we're going to M- – Michigan has beaten the Buckeyes two times since 2003. It was a 2003 win, and there's a 2011 win. And I believe in every single game since 2003, Ohio State has been a top-10 team besides the 2011 season. Um, and I guess, you know, my question to you, Anthony, is obviously a very different perspective than I have. How does it feel – does the rivalry still feel up to the hype every year with you guys just – I mean, essentially – pounding down on us I'm curious uh honestly I, I i feel like i go into like every season with expectations that we're going to beat you guys just basically basing it off of our like previous success against you guys mine is 2011 because that season sucked but i think it's more or less than i feel like any any given season we could possibly lose you guys i mean i'm not going to go into the season super cocky thinking oh we're untouchable there's no way that you guys are going to beat us but no i i don't go into the season assuming that we're just going to dominate you guys every, every year. Absolutely not. Fair enough. And I mean, yeah, there's been a lot of close games since that, that 2011 win for Michigan. I mean, 2012 at Ohio state, that was a close one. 2013. I'm pretty sure that came down to a last second, two point conversion. Uh, 2014. I think that was like a 14 point game. And I, that brings that brings me to the point of Harbaugh arriving at Michigan um, in 2015. The expectations were high. Harbaugh was supposed to be the savior of Michigan football, um, and he did he did fairly well in his first season. He doubled our wins from five to ten, and I think you know as he, I thought he got a bad rap for you know the first couple seasons he was here because Ohio State was coming off a national championship win. Um, mm-hmm. And not only that, but you guys returned Zeke, you returned JT Barrett, Michael Thomas, Joey Bosa. And I mean, geez, man, if it wasn't for that loss to Michigan State on that last second field goal, I, I'm i like 99% certain you guys would have repeated as national champions because that team, it might not make sense since that team didn't make the playoff, but I thought that they, you know, they potentially could have been better than the 2014 squad. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that – I know it's weird to base it off, like, I, the 2014 season, I don't think anybody ever even thought we were going to make it to that game. I didn't think we were going to make it to that game. I mean, we lost to Virginia Tech in, what, week two? Yeah. I mean, I didn't think we were going to make it to the game in 2014. And when we made it, I didn't think we were going to beat Alabama. I mean, I had confidence. I was like, dude, I'm like, we can, we can definitely beat this team. But uh, didn't think we were going to beat them. We finally got to the game. We beat them. I think it was more of like just uh, the momentum of like rallying behind like Cardell Jones and stuff. I mean, a lot of people seem to think that if JT Barrett was in that game, we probably wouldn't have won it, wouldn't have won it. But eh, I still think we could have probably won it with him. I think it was just more like rally behind Cardell Jones, ride the momentum, win the games. Then 2015 comes around. And like you said, that loss to Michigan State, that was devastating. Man, I remember watching that game. Um, like – the, my, my biggest thing is I'd rather get blown out by a team by like 100 points than lose on a last-second field goal. And mm-hmm. I thought he missed that field goal. I don't even remember the kicker's name. What was the kicker's name for Michigan State that year? Uh, I, all, I could just make, all I can just picture in my hand is just running down the field doing that windmill, dude. I, I can't even yeah. think about it. Uh, it was that's a super that, common name, though. Oh, yeah. I, I remember his number four, right, I think. I thought he missed it. I thought he missed the kick. I, I was like, we had a timeout, and we didn't even call the timeout to ice the kicker. And I thought he missed it. I was with I was with some Ohio State fans for that game, and I, so did I, and so did they. And we they they started celebrating. I was like, you know, wait a minute, wait a minute. They're putting their hands up. I think he made it. But that 
that 2015 Michigan State team, I mean, they had that game against you guys, and then obviously the whole Blake O'Neill dropping the snap thing, that, that was like a fairy tale season for the Spartans. But That was like more or less thinking ahead of your opponent. You know, we I think Michigan State, they were without Connor Cook in that game. Yep. Uh, we went into that game assuming we were going to beat them, and that did not go to, go to plan at all. Like in my mind, I was like, dude, no way Michigan State's going to hang with us. And then it got towards the end of the game. I'm like, dude, I was like, I, I, I don't know how we're in this situation. Like, how, how, how are they going to be in this game with us? Bad weather. I'm not going to blame the weather because we should have dominated that game. I don't want to blame it on because there was a big controversy over Ezekiel Elliott being like, um, being not sick. Not enough or, touches, right? And yeah, not enough touches, but it was because they thought he was sick or something. I was all like, eh, I'm not going to blame it on that. You guys had a horrible game plan in that game, whether or not. You guys should have ran the ball. You guys didn't run the ball. You guys tried to be they, they played hero ball all game. It feels like with JT Barrett throwing the ball is all like it was it was just hard to watch. It was really hard, really, really, really hard to watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean that was that was a very tough game, I can imagine as a Buckeye fan. But I, I think what was that? Was that your eleventh game of the season? Because I'm pretty sure the game was the week after. And I feel like all the anger, frustration, and rage that Ohio State had from that MSU game, they came to Ann Arbor with, and they just absolutely thrashed us. I'm, I think it was 42 to 13. You guys won, and that was Harbaugh's first year at Michigan, and I'll never forget it because after the game, after we lost and the stadium was empty, uh, a bunch of Ohio State fans, they unraveled a, like a little banner they made, and it said, welcome back, Harbaugh, or like, Wel welcome home or something like that. I was like – Sheesh, man, that's tough. And it's crazy because the game plan in that game, like I just said, against Michigan State, we didn't run the ball. Against yeah. you guys, we I, I just looked up the stats. We had 113 passing yards in that game. Literally, we ran the ball right down your guys' throats all game long, and that was the success for us, running the ball. Yeah, yeah I, it, was it was so, so frustrating. frustrating. Um, Like, we, we couldn't stop it. It was literally just Zeke and Barrett, Zeke and Barrett, read option all day long. And so Mitch – Mitch is a diehard Notre Dame fan. So you guys played us last game of the season, destroyed us, and then you went into the Fiesta Bowl against Notre Dame. And Mitch, I want to know what, 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 what your thoughts were on that Notre Dame Ohio State game. Yeah, yeah so, so this, this game, game was in 2015, the, the Fiesta, Fiesta Bowl. Bowl. And this is when, when Jalen Smith, Smith actually went down with an ACL injury. And if I'm not wrong, I think Joey Bosa actually went down with an injury as well. He got ejected. So, what's that? He got ejected from the game for targeting. Very, yeah, he got ejected. And, I mean, it's great. Great of a Notre Dame game um, against Ohio State was. I mean, it was, I don't know. It was frustrating because, like, it's like the same situation as uh, Michigan. You know, you never never really build on a big lead against Ohio State. And usually when that happens, I mean, you're, you're going to lose. I mean, with Ohio State, as good as they are with their – you know, extreme talent. I mean, we never I – don't, I don't think we were ever leading in that game. And the final score ended up beating like 42 to 28, 26. I can't remember what it was. A lot, a lot, and, of, people, a lot of people thought that when Jalen Smith went down, the, like, <clears throat> like it was like such a big advantage. Like uh, like that was the, a lot of the big reason why we won that game because Jalen Smith got hurt. I'm like, like, dude, we lost our best player in like what, the second quarter, the first, second quarter? It's like you lost your best player on defense. I don't know if he was your best player on the team. Was he? I don't know. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he we was lost our best star coming in, best yeah. linebacker in the country. And Joey Bosa was arguably, I don't want to say our best player because our team was absolutely stacked that year. It was but stacked. On, on defense, he was probably our best player. Lost him. So I think it was a pretty even playing field in terms of who you were missing, minus the fact that our team was already stacked. Um, but yeah, I, I, I understand what you're saying. I, I completely see what your point of view is. And like, I see it like with teams like when we played Iowa a couple of years ago and we lost to them. So. Right. It's just like <clears throat> we never led in that game. So it's even like like I want to ask you as an Ohio State fan, like, was it even competitive at that point? You know, are you asking, like, is it competitive, like watching the game? Like, yeah, watching the game. I was I was like I was upset that we weren't in the in the, the playoffs. I mean, I was like, if it, I guess it's Notre Dame. It was going to be a fun game. I thought it was going to be competitive. I mean, it was competitive up until what? what? I don't even know what the score was up until we actually broke away because you guys made it like what seven to fourteen get point game somewhat in the, some some point in the game. But I don't know. I enjoyed watching the game, but it's not as fun knowing that we're still not going to be in the playoffs. Um, but I still enjoyed it because we won. But right, 
It's a New Year's Six win, though. It's always an accomplishment as a team to do something like that. Um, as a Notre Dame fan, I can't say the same, though. <laughs> you guys play each other, too. You guys, uh, you and uh, that team up north, you guys play each other a lot. Yeah, not uh, from here on out, though. No, no we, we got to – we don't wait. Or we, we don't play, play until, until 2032 20, or something like that. 2032. Something, something like that. that. Something, something absurd. absurd. Uh, Hope comes back and they rearrange the schedule like uh, BYU schedule and you guys get a different type of schedule and get uh, get to play each other again. Right. Right, right. And, Anthony, I also want to ask you another question. Um, <clears throat> so the game against Clemson last year, um, personally, I thought you guys is – Sorry to say this, but your guys has lost to Clemson in the playoff game the year before. I thought that was your guys' better team uh, for Ohio State. And then you guys go on to lose on, you know, Justin Fields making the uh, read to, a, I think it was a lot of I'm not sure who it was. Don't, I mean, don't call me on that, but he breaks, uh, oh, yeah. I think he, he breaks left in the end zone instead of going right, in which Justin Fields thought he was uh, going inside and the Clemson safety picks it off. And I thought that Ohio State team was going to win the national championship. I mean, that team was loaded with Akuda and uh, Chase Young. And then last year, you guys surprised me, um, blowing out Clemson. And then, I mean, you know the rest in the national championship. <laughs> yeah, that, that's uh, the, the national championship. I'd like to uh, – our offense was – I don't want to say it's as good as Alabama's offense in the national championship, but our offense was – equally able to score points minus the fact that our defense didn't give us any chance to be in that game right, right after that right after halftime uh we came down the field and cut it to a 14 point game I was like okay sweet still got a whole fourth quarter and a bunch of the third bunch of this third quarter to go this is going to be a game and then boom two plays later Alabama scoring another touchdown I'm like dude I'm like there is no way that you guys are going to be successful on offense when the offense can't run what they're trying to run because the defense is giving them absolutely no chance in the game so right the final score ended up being 52 to 24. Was that? Uh, it was bad. It was pretty bad. They just okay, kept scoring. Yeah. We couldn't even, we couldn't even keep up with their, like their backups, their backup running back kept coming in. Our defense couldn't stop them. I don't want to blame COVID. I mean, we were missing a lot of stuff. Some of our better off defensive players were out of the game. I mean, I'm not saying the outcome would have been different. Maybe a little closer. We lost our starting running back on the what first play of the game. Dude, Sermon, I thought the outcome would have been different if he was playing the whole game. Yeah. I yeah. feel like, I, I feel like, like, it's crazy. Like, fans watching the game they have a different perspective than actual like coaches because we're obviously not coaches so we're watching the game we're all like bro i would have done this differently and we would have been more successful i'm like in my mind i'm like dude why do you guys divert from the game plan when your player goes down dude next man up just same game plan we had plenty of good running backs i mean master t wasn't trey sermon trey sermon wasn't like me watching trey sermon and like i won't say the first half of the year because it feels like we only had a half a year but mm -hmm. It was hard to watch him play. Like every time I watched him, I was talking so much trash about him. Like now I, I take it back because he actually went off in the last few games. But it's like watching him in the first part of the season, I was like, oh, he's running backwards again. Oh, he's getting tackled behind the line of scrimmage again. But then boom, Big Ten championship game comes around and the rest is history. I was just about to comment on that. So Sermon coming from Oklahoma, I knew this guy was going to be a great running back. And, you know, he was just kind of – he didn't have the starting position as the running back. Um, like the first couple games uh, for Ohio State. Yeah, he. he I, yeah, I think uh, it was more or less he was transferring, and I don't think they wanted to take the take the job away from Master Teague right away, you know. And I don't think they really did. Master Teague was a starter all the way. I mean, they they kind of were in and out, exchanging uh, starting roles, but um, there were two different running backs. Master Teague's obviously like a straight line power running back, and Master Teague is extremely elusive and an all around like great player. So mm -hmm. um, I didn't really like Master T, but you know, after Sturman popped off against Northwestern in the Big Ten Championship, I was like, oh man, like Ohio State's got another like, um, I guess position to, uh, you know, exploit. Um, you know, they got another opportunity to do something, you know, on offense in which they did. And you could clearly tell with Sermon his performance in the Clemson game, I mean, that was just a boom. That was an absolute boom. And so I thought, you know, it was going to be neck and neck with Alabama. You know, I was literally thinking that game, like, okay, you got two high-powered offenses, and, you know, Sermon goes down, and I'm like, oh, damn. And then, you know, nobody remembers the little details about the game, and it's unfortunate because I think Sermon was super important for this team. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think they had a game plan for him. I thought my personally, I think their game plan was go in the game, run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. And it opens up a lot more stuff for Justin Fields. But I, like I said, he went down with injury, game plan changed, and then we were throwing the ball way too much. And Alabama seeing that we were doing that, they're like, oh, they're not going to run the ball now as much as they were because their best their their starting running back went down. I mean, Master Teague didn't get the carries. I mean, he looked good. <laughs> Master Teague came in and but he had a pretty a long run, touchdown run, didn't he? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think it was. Um, I don't know what it was, but I think it was it was the lead in the game. Just, yeah, it was a good run. And again, I just wanted to comment on like the two offenses. You know, I was just waiting for Ohio State to, you know, click and click and click, and they ended up only scoring like twenty four points. All right. Yeah. Okay. So let's, let's talk about the upcoming 2021 season, because I think the media has finally learned to stop hyping up Michigan after years and years of disappointment, because I I believe we returned Mm -hmm. nine of 11 on offense and nine of 11 on defense. Don't like quote me on that specifically like that. Those are the numbers, but something close to that. Whereas Ohio state, I mean, geez, Anthony, you guys are losing a lot of production. Yeah, we, we lost a lot of players. I mean, no no loss is going to be bigger than uh, Justin Fields. But that's my, my main thing I wanted to ask. I wanted to say, like, quarterbacks is, like, in my opinion, if you're going to be successful, you need a good quarterback. And I think your guys is unsuccessful against us is, is a lot of the times you guys don't really have a great quarterback. Like, when's the last time you guys had a quarterback that was, you know, somebody that people really thought is going to be a threat to them. I mean, I thought when what's his name from Ole Miss transferred over to you guys, I was like, Oh man, that was, I thought that was a huge gift for you guys. I was like, he was, he was Shea Patterson, right? Yeah. I was like, he was really good at Ole Miss before he got injured. And then I was like, that kind of freaked me out when he transferred over there. And then we got to play the game against you guys. And he looked like, um, who's the guy, John O'Corn. Yeah. That, <laughs> so that, I mean, that's just the thing too. I mean, Harbaugh came to Michigan. He was the savior. But he was he was supposed to be the quarterback whisperer. He was supposed to be the guy that was going to bring in the five star quarterbacks, develop them for two or three years, and send them off to the first round of the NFL draft. And I mean, his first year, 2015, he got a transfer in Jake Rudock. And you know, to be completely honest, I thought Jake he did his job. He doubled our wins from the year before. He made the right reads, and he would dump the ball off a lot, but he did a good job. And then he moved to 2016, um, Wilton Spate. And Wilton was, he was really good up until his injury at Iowa. Cause we were nine and oh, we went into, you know, went to the Hawkeye stadium at night. He hurts his shoulder and we end up losing that game. We beat Indiana the next week with uh, O'Corn at quarterback. And then we head into the shoe in 2016. Um, I think you guys were ranked second. We were ranked third. And I, I remember he threw a pick six, but I'm also pretty sure he had a second interception. But he just, and I, all the credit to Ohio state, you guys won that game, but Wilton Spate since that injury against Iowa just did not look the same whatsoever. Um, and you know, if that injury never would have happened, who knows how good he could have been, but that was pretty much the end of the Spate era. 2017 was just a dumpster fire. 2018, like you said, Shea Patterson comes over um everyone's super hyped up img five-star quarterback but not that shea was bad but he i kind of feel like he was set up for failure to be honest because everyone was talking so much um that he was just going to ball out you know he's going to lead us to the playoff he's going to lead us to a natty and when your expectations are that that high it's hard to deliver but i mean yeah 2018 we go we go into the shoe again we're ranked fourth. I believe you guys are ranked 10th. And this is another thing too. You guys dropped 62 points on us because Don Brown, and again, all the credit to Ohio state, you guys served that game. You absolutely killed us, but Don Brown, he couldn't switch to his own defense. And I, I'm curious, like, what were your thoughts on that game? Was it just like, I mean, giddy up, Michigan's not changing their defense. We're going to keep running these drag routes with our receivers that can run a four, three or so you- you're talking about the uh, what seat? What what seat? What game are you talking about? Which one? 2018. 2018? Talking about when you guys right at halftime was when you guys blocked our kick and uh, and it was really close going into halftime, right? And then yeah, because you guys, I think um, 
blocked our punt. Well, you guys blocked something. No, it was a muffed. We muffed our freaking return. Yeah, well, I think you faked the punt, and then we stopped it, and we scored. And then, uh, yeah, okay. you, mu- you muffed a kick return, and we recovered on that. And, like, the very next play, like, Chris Evans had a little outlet pass, and he scored. Yeah, and it was like a two-point game at half. Yeah, I was like, dude, I was watching the game. I was like, I was, I was hyped because we were dominating the game. And then the end of the ha- and it's end of the second half happened. I'm like, I was like, I, I'm like, what am I watching right now, bro? I'm like, there's no way that this is really happening right now. And I thought it was gonna be like one of those really close games mm-hmm. through the rest of the game. I was like, <clears throat> man, we had all the momentum in the world, and then we literally gave it to you guys at the end because I feel like we screwed ourselves. Going, we literally handed you guys so many points at the end of that half. Mm-hmm. I was like, dude we're literally going to be in a dog fight with them in the second half. And then boom, second half comes around. We know what happens. Wasn't it? I'm pretty sure that was the game where we, uh, that onside kick we kicked. And it was, I think a lave that or was it a lave or seven bag. Somebody caught it and they returned it for, well, it was a block block punt. You guys went to punt it. Oh, we I remember that. It. Yeah. We, we blocked it and it was like a return return block punt by seven banks. Yeah, that was, that that entire second half was just brutal. I mean, I'm pretty sure I turned the TV off like halfway through the fourth because I was just tired of watching it. But I mean, you had Paris Campbell, Terry McLaurin, um, just so many weapons. And you know, I don't, I don't, I, an NFL team can't put five guys into man coverage. Like, so I, I just, I didn't understand why we didn't move to a zone. We didn't, and it, and again, it's so easy to look back on these things as a fan and be like, oh, I would have done this, and I would have known what to do, but. In reality, it was just like stop staying in man coverage. Like you're getting burnt time after time over and after over. time. Yeah, same play over and over again. It's more like because I've been in a situation where you see a team run the same play over. It's like against Alabama, bro. They kept running the same thing on us. It feels like I'm mm-hmm. like, dude, when are we gonna realize adjust. and yeah, adjust? Like, dude, they kept like I don't even know how like linebackers got switched on to Devonte Smith. I'm like, why? Like watching it. In real time, I didn't even see it. And then watching it on replay, I was like, how the hell did um is it Borland? Whatever, Tough Borland get lined up yep. on him? I'm, I, I was like mind blown. I was like, dude, we're I think that was right after we scored and made it a 14 point game, possibly. And then that happened. I'm like, bro, I, I and he didn't even play the second half. Devontae Smith didn't even touch the ball in the second half. Mm-hmm. And we still got blown out by him. So that was no excuse right there. So yeah. Yeah. A lot of frustration. Well, <sighs> Yeah, and I mean, I, I, Dwayne Haskins, he – did he break the all-time, like, passing record that season for Ohio State back in 2018? I'm curious. I thought I, – I think uh, – man, I don't know specifically if he did or not. Uh, probably, though, he had a – it was over, like, four – oh, close to 5,000 passing yards or it, something. Just something bizarre like that, yeah. Which was crazy, too, because he was a one – he played there one season, right? Uh, Well – I mean, started one starting started. season. Yeah. I mean, he kind of got a little, he got a lot of playing time the year before that as a backup. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, against you guys, he came in the year before and uh, tossed that dime to uh, Austin Mack. And after JT Bear got hurt. Yeah. Yeah. I remember. Oh, that Austin Mack catch. Yeah. Tyreek Ty- Ty- Canell came down on that. And I was like, oh, he's going to smoke him. Austin he Mack has. Him. All my respect for holding. But if you that if ball. you watch that replay, I feel like that might have been an incomplete pass. I think it was more like the hype, and everybody thought it was a catch. Mm. I feel like I've watched it so many times that <laughs> that could have been easily reviewed as an incomplete pass because he got smacked, and I feel like that ball came out a little bit, hit the ground. Mm. That was that was a heck of a game. I remember uh, your guys' uniforms for that twenty seventeen game too. It was like the uh, like kind of icy white, silver grayish. And they blamed they blamed your guys' uh, sideline for injuring JT Barrett. Remember, it was like the cart guy hit him in the knee. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was crazy. I was like, dude, I was like, I don't know. I don't know anything about that. I'm just watching the game. And then we're down by 14. And I'm like, dude, how are we losing to John O'Corn? <laughs> crazy, man. That was, that was an interesting game for sure. Yeah, and then we go to, I mean, 29, the, the 2019 game felt really weird to me uh, it was just it felt off we we come down first drive we score we had like a flip pass to Giles Jackson and I was like okay yeah we got some momentum but after that first drive it just felt like Ohio State snatched the momentum right back and you guys you didn't look back I mean you just you again you used your speed and athleticism in space I remember 
Garrett Wilson, oh God, I want to say he had just two touchdowns that were just absolute bombs. Um, I remember J.K. Dobbins had like a, a cut route in the middle of the field and he broke Amber Thomas's ankles and you guys were just using your athleticism out in the open. And it was yeah. the same exact story every year. You guys using your talent and us failing to make adjustments. Great, great offensive line by us because uh, J.K. Dobbins absolutely dominated that game. I feel like watching it online, watching it live, you know, Gus Johnson, obviously the most entertaining person to listen to. When he oh, calls. yeah. Yep. They, they, I feel like they knew him and Joe Clatt, they knew that J.K. was going to break one off eventually. And he ended up breaking off four. So uh, that was awesome. And Garrett Wilson had that one touchdown. I think the only touchdown he had is right when um, uh, Justin Fields got hurt um he, he came out of the game for a play then right after he oh yeah came in and, yeah threw that freaking missile that was a dot yeah, yeah it was straight up that, dude i was like that was that, that was such a good game for us i don't know I, I, it's, it's weird as a fan watching the game we don't know the perspective that you guys have watching it because you're the fan of the other team we're like us we're like we're enjoying the shit out of the game you yep. guys are probably watching it super miserable just like Yep. At that point, you kind of feel defeated watching the game. You're like, dude, I don't even care anymore. You probably shut the game off. Like, I couldn't <laughs> do that if we were getting destroyed. I was like, I'd sit there and watch us get destroyed. But um, I feel like any fan, like like us against Iowa and us against Purdue, felt defeated, man, watching that game. I'm like, dude, I was like, how is this happening right now? But I don't know how you see how you see it. Um. So, yeah, I mean, j- basically my entire life, I- I'm 19. The only time I remember – us beating you guys was 2011 because in 2003 I was two years old but I just from that 2011 game um I remember shoelace I remember him you know having some big runs or whatever and I was like okay yeah this is sweet like this is a cool rivalry because I was like the first year I really got into like Michigan football and it's just so insane for me to look back uh you know 10 years and be like wow that was the last time we beat you guys and yeah it's just Watching the game every year, it feels like the same exact thing. We keep it close for maybe the first, the second, the third quarter, and then it gets to the fourth, and you guys just break away. But it's just, it's pure frustration, and that brings me to this point. Um, I feel like the game, uh, it means, at least it seems to me like it means a lot more to Ohio State than it does to Michigan. I mean, I, I see you guys, you have a clock counting down. 365 days a year you practice you know your scout team is wearing our helmets and our jerseys it just seems like you guys have so much more intensity about it whereas we it kind of feels like Michigan just tries to ignore it and push it under the rug and just act like it doesn't exist and for me personally whenever I post about it on Instagram um the the game and that we haven't won in forever people get upset at me for posting it but be like hey don't don't talk about this blah, blah blah i'm like you can't ignore it you can't ignore the problem it's not going to go away it hasn't gone away but do you think do you feel like ohio state takes it a lot more serious than michigan um i mean i i only watch it from our perspective i mean i see what we post on social media and stuff mm-hmm. um i don't follow your guys's team very much so i don't obviously what you're saying you're obvious they obviously don't treat it as like they should be. So, yep. I mean, probably I would say we probably look at it like as a much bigger thing than, than you guys are looking at it, but I don't, I don't really think you guys are like sweeping it under the rug, but more or less. Right. I, I, it's hard. It's hard to talk. It's hard to like even come up with what you guys are thinking about it. Cause I know the players want to win the games. I don't know if it's your coaching or honestly, I think it's quarterback, you get a good quarterback and it's going to be a super competitive game. I don't know who you guys got coming in. I know you guys got like a, five star was it like bander or ben something i don't know jj mccarthy jj mccarthy i don't know what the hell i was thinking but uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know he's coming in and i don't know if he's gonna start or who else you guys got at quarterback but i think honestly my personal opinion starts at who's gonna be running the offense i can't really say that much because we've had jt barrett running the offense which i love jt barrett not our best quarterback we've ever had obviously wasn't a great throwing quarterback but he was a leader you guys need a lot of leadership to uh be really successful against us definitely and I get Mitch I'll ask you because obviously Anthony's Ohio State I'm a Michigan fan what do you do you think Ohio State takes the rivalry more serious we both want to win we both want to win I know Michigan wants to win that game more than anything especially with you know losing eight or nine straight whatever it is now but what do you think about that yeah so all over like social media a little bit I always see uh you know a bunch of Michigan fans as you said you know just like kind of don't talk about it and put it away and stuff like that. And, mm-hmm. you know, I always see 
you know, Ohio State fans, you know, all over social media, you know, expressing how they feel about the game and, you know, their love of the rivalry. Yep. Obviously, because, well, there's two different outcomes. But I just feel like there's more energy and intensity from the Ohio, Ohio State side than the Michigan Wolverine side. That's just my thought, though. Mm. I agree with that. I agree with that 100%. Um, yeah. All right. So that brings, that brings us to the 2021 season. Like I said, we, Michigan's returning a lot. Ohio state lost, you know, Justin Fields, Trey Sermon. However, you guys, you got Chris Olave to come back and Garrett Wilson's going into his junior season. That is probably undoubtedly going to be the number one wide receiving duo in the country. How, how are you feeling about that, Anthony? Uh, I, I was surprised when, uh, Alave was coming back. Honestly, I think that if he would have uh, declared for the draft, he was probably going to be a late first round to early second round pick. So, yep. I mean, that's like a big thing. A lot of players like leave a lot of money on the table deciding to do stuff like that because a lot of the times they're guaranteed first or second round money and then boom, they come back and something crazy happens. They have a really underwhelming season mm-hmm. and they lose out on a lot of money. But I was super surprised when he decided to come back. I definitely think they're going to be the top uh, receiving duo in the country, but who's throwing on the ball, man. That's what I don't know. That's, we got yeah. three dudes fighting for that job. I think it's going to be CJ Stroud. People like to say, don't sleep on Jack Miller. I don't think Jack Miller is going to win the job. I think somebody in this, in this QB room is going to transfer. I mean, there's no way all this talent stays in the locker room fighting for the job. When I feel like it's almost guaranteed, like all the hype from the previous season, kind of like, Shoot, I don't even know other season to compare it to because we've we're always pretty uh guaranteed at quarterback. But this is the biggest question mark that we've not had in a long time is who's gonna be our quarterback. So I have no idea. Right. And I, I want to know the answer to this question too. Who has been your favorite quarterback over the past decade and a half that's come through Ohio State? Because you've had Troy Smith, then it went to Terrell Pryor, then it went to Braxton Miller, JT and Cardell, Haskins, and then Fields. I mean, those seven guys, that's insane. Just Next, the next, the next. You got, and like you said, you have three guys right now in your quarterback room that could start. Who out of those guys have been your favorite to watch? You know, it's it's honestly super hard to uh, to pick I one, bet. but it's weird because they're all different players. I mean, you got talent, and then you got like players that are your favorite. I mean, personally, my page on Instagram was made. Like it was made before JT Barrett was a starter because I I remember specifically having the page when we paid when we played Clemson in the 2000 what 13, 13 or fourteen uh, Orange Bowl but yeah, um yeah. JT Barrett was probably my favorite quarterback obviously wasn't the most talented I think Justin Fields was by far the most talented quarterback that we've had in the last decade or probably all time I don't think many quarterbacks really come close to him I mean I can debate with other Ohio State fans that say oh Troy Smith is the best I'm like dude no he's not. Troy Smith was like other quarterbacks. I love Troy Smith. Great player. Won the Heisman. But these quarterbacks, JT Barrett, Troy Smith, Terrell Pryor, they were not great throwing quarterbacks. These guys were not. Justin Fields, a great passer, very athletic. Um, I mean, every single one, amazing athlete, like without a doubt. All great athletes. It's more or less favorite. JT Barrett was my favorite, but my, my, the player that I'm saying is the best that we've had is Justin Fields, but uh, JT Barrett is definitely my favorite one that we've had. Yeah. And Just because he played a hundred years at Ohio state and I got to watch more of his, <laughs> more of his games than I mean, everybody else's. Imagine it. Imagine it from my perspective. I mean, yeah, I felt like he was there for a hundred years. Just, he, I think he was a three-time captain for you guys, but year after year, I'm like, geez, has this guy like graduated yet? He's going to leave. Hasn't he beat us enough already? It's weird. Watch them like going in every year. You're like, in your guys' perspective, I don't know if you guys like what you guys think of him. You guys like, oh, he's not that good. How was how are we gonna lose to this guy again? I think in one one of the games against you guys, he ran the ball 30 times for over 100 yards. I'm like, why is the running back why is the quarterback <laughs> running the ball 30 times in a game? Yeah. Yeah. I I he was such a good leader. Like his mental game was you know, one of the best I've ever seen because yeah, I mean, he wasn't a great thrower, but he was tough and he ran the ball and he just, he never quit and he would wear us down every single year. And it was so yeah. frustrating to watch, but you got to respect it. You it was like read, read option over and over again against you guys. It was like, it's more or less 
when are you guys going to stop it? Because you know, it's going to, it's going to happen every game. I mean, Mm -hmm. I think JT Barrett probably is one of the top, top 10 rushers in Ohio state history as a quarterback, because he's played. So he played so long and he has so many rushing yards, but I don't know. Like I said, watching it in your guys' perspective, you guys are probably watching like, how is this dude doing this to us over and over? Like, when are we going to stop this dude from doing this to us? Yeah. And it feels like at some times, as the game goes on, the field starts like tilting downward and you guys are almost running it like literally downhill because you're running backs are just falling forward down after down. And it's just, it's, it's, hard, to, it's hard to watch. It is so hard to watch. Yeah. Especially cause you're, we're not, we're not players. So we don't really know if, especially if a team's running like hurry up offense up tempo and they're like running, running it and running it like, that defense is getting tired, man. You guys are probably so tired after it gets done to you guys so many times, and boom. Like, like take it back to 2019. J.K. Dobbins runs it outside. After getting it ran on 100 times in a row, you guys can't keep up with this guy. You're like, you guys are all super, super deflated after it gets done to you guys a million times in a row. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, we mentioned the quarterbacks, but also the running backs that have gone through Ohio State. Um, Carlos Hyde. J.K. Dobbins, obviously, Ezekiel Elliott, um, Trey Sermon. The the talent and, you know, this kind of brings me to the Alabama-Auburn uh, debate or whatever because a lot of people are like, well, if Auburn can find ways to beat Bama, because I'm pretty sure Auburn's like four and seven in the last 11 games against Alabama. If, if Auburn can find a way to beat Alabama, why can't Michigan find a way to beat Ohio State? And – I understand Ohio State and Alabama are like the top two recruiting classes every single year, but there's no excuse. I mean, Auburn's they're they have the same, if not worse, recruits that we do. So it's just I don't know. It's so bizarre to me. So bizarre. When's when's the last time Auburn beat Alabama? I think it was 2018. Who was the quarterback? 2018, 2019. 2019 was it? 2019 was it? Alabama was. Yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, I know. So Alabama, Alabama played you guys because they lost. Yeah, so that's two years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Auburn. So Auburn's beat them really recently. Yeah, they beat them by three points, forty-five to forty-eight. That's crazy, man. Let me see who this. Bo Nix. How does what? Bo Nix isn't even good, bro. <laughs> like, what is this Bo Nix hype, dude? I watched this dude play, and all like I'm watching the games. Like Bo Nix, just true fresh. Wasn't he a true freshman when he started in 2019? I believe so. Yeah. He's not even good. And they found a way. And that that Alabama team had Jerry Judy, Devontae Smith, Henry Ruggs, Jalen Waddell. Najee uh, Harris. Najee Harris. Yeah. Yeah. Throw Najee in there, too. My goodness. Absolutely insane. They, they, I mean, where's the points? Because I'm looking at this. We got Alabama passing for 335 yards. Najee Harris, 150 <laughs> rushing yards. And Henry Ruggs, 99 receiving yards. And you look at Auburn. 15 for 30, 173 yards. And then we got the receiver was like 66 yards. Like, where did all these points come from? Yeah. I, it's just, it, makes me, it makes me even more upset seeing that Auburn beat that Alabama team and we – a decade straight of losing. It just – like, yeah. There's no excuse. There's no excuse. One game. One game will decide your whole season, man. You guys coming into the season undefeated. Boom, last game of the season, Ohio State. Beat Ohio State, go to the playoffs, boom, get destroyed by Ohio State. And then you're playing in the freaking whatever offsetting bowl game there is because every year they switch up the two college football playoff games. Yeah, right. Yeah. I want to know, so we're going into 2021, your defense, you lost all three starting linebackers, I believe. Is that is that right? Uh, Pete Warner, Tuff Borland, and, uh, yeah, we lost uh, Baron Browning. Yeah, all three, all three of them. <laughs> All three linebackers, and then um, Sean Wade. So there's a there's a corner. What about your safeties? Uh, shit, dude. I don't even know who who we're gonna have starting a safety because Marcus Hooker was like a starter for a lot of the season, but I don't even think he's gonna be on the team next season. He just got into some 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 crazy problems. Like that he had he had these issues last year. I don't even remember exactly what it was, but it's like a big deal when you're playing at Ohio state, man. I think he had that issue, this issue last year and it happened again. So I don't even see this dude playing on the team. Jeez. I don't even know who our safeties are going to be, man. I have to look at the depth chart and see, because there's so many young players on our team that I don't even know, honestly. Yeah. I So you guys are going to be very, very young this upcoming season, but 
I don't know. I That's happened before. Like Michigan will have some experience coming back. Ohio State will be young. But by the time it gets to the end of the season, all those young, extremely talented guys for the Buckeyes have been through it already. And at the end of the day, their talent beats our experience. Even when it's like, I'm not saying it's going to be a, a down year for Ohio State. Ohio State doesn't even have down years. But just a reloading year, I guess I would call it. Um, we can't even beat you guys in your reloading years when we have guys that come back because well, your players are just, they're on a different level. If any years, if any year for you guys to beat us, it's going to be this year, this coming up season. I mean, I mean, that would be your best opportunity because I feel like I don't say we're on the same playing field offensively because we have really got a lot of uh, offensive weapons, but mm-hmm. quarterback wise, we're on the same playing field. I don't want to say. Um, I mean, CJ Stroud has a little bit of, I don't he don't even have playing time really under his belt, man. He's played in like one game. Um, you guys have quarterbacks, like I said, that are coming in as true freshmen and I don't know your backup is you guys just had somebody transfer out of the transfer as a backup. Yeah, we had, so well, Milton's McCaffrey gone now is- and yeah, McCaffrey's gone. So it's looking like it's going to be McNamara. Oh, transfer in. Um, yeah. Texas tech. I think Alec Bowman. Hmm. Oh, psh, he just. Guy. He just came, so he's going to compete with McNamara because I bet McCarthy this this first year for him is just going to be a learning experience. But I think it's going to be between McNamara and Bowman. But that's another interesting thing is that McNamara, he, whenever he came in for us um, during this past COVID season, he looked really, really good. He, he didn't overthink anything. He made his reads extremely fast, and he would just – he had awesome ball placement. So I'd be very interested to see how – he does in our first couple games, especially against Washington. I mean, we play Washington, one of our first three games of the year, so that'll be. Didn't he get, didn't he get hurt last year? Uh, McNamara. Yeah, like a concussion, concussion or something. Yeah, he got lit up. Yep. I mean, this season's. I mean, dude, last season was weird, but I mean, you guys come and play in Washington. Did we go straight to Big Ten play in our first game of the season? Nebraska, what Nebraska? Maybe it was Indiana. I don't know. Somebody in the Big Ten that we go to Oregon, or Oregon comes to us. And, That's uh, right. We, yeah. Which I don't even know who Oregon has anymore. They lost a lot of their playmakers, their their quarterback. I don't even know if he's still there. Wasn't he a senior? Wait, I, I don't even know. I'm not sure. Mitch, do you know? No, I know Herbert. <laughs> I don't know about Herbert? He not, he not there anymore. No, he knows lost. about Herbert, man. <laughs> they got no Herbert. <laughs> no Herbert. No Sewell. Yeah, yeah he's gone. It's, it's weird. But hey, I want to go backwards a little bit. 2011, we probably beat you guys if Tattoo Gate doesn't doesn't happen. So. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I agree. With like, the, we lost so many players, dude. You guys were like, what, six and five or something like that heading we, into that game? Yeah, we played, we, it was bad. I think we played, we won six games that year. We beat Wisconsin, and then boom, we, I think we ended up playing Florida in a nobody's bowl at the end of the year, and we got beat by Florida in the nobody's bowl. So, <laughs> Uh, that was crazy, but yeah, tattoo gate doesn't happen. We still have Terrell Pryor and a whole bunch of our offensive weapons and our head coach. So, yeah, <laughs> it, well, doesn't happen. we only won by six too. We only won by Ooh. six. I think I think uh, J T Barrett. I don't know if he started that game or not, but he came. Not J T Barrett, but uh, Braxton Miller. Yep, I don't think yep. he started the game. I think he came in at the end. I think there was an interception that he threw late in the game. That was like right at the end when we were driving maybe to uh, possibly take the lead. He threw an interception. I think that's what happened. Oh, yeah. No, I remember that. I think Courtney Avery is the guy that caught it off the tip. I mean, of course, I'm going to remember it because it was the last time we beat you guys. But, yeah, I mean, crazy game. And it's just, yeah, the fact that we only won by six in just an absolute dumpster fire of a year for you guys, like trying to get everything back to, you know, the level you were at. It's Were you guys good that year? Uh, 2011. I think we were 11 and two. We is that where you guys played Ole Miss or uh, uh Gamecocks? Tech. Oh, Virginia Tech. Yeah, so we played we played Virginia Tech in the Sugar Bowl. I want to say, and that was that was a pretty entertaining game. But that, yeah, I think that was our last New York New Year Six Bowl win too. Was it was it the game against South Carolina the year after you guys played when the Jadavion Clowney? You know? Clowney. Oh yeah. Oh god. Was that the preview? Was that the was that 2012 or 13? I think, I, I think that was 2012. It wasn't 13 because you guys were pretty bad in 13 because I remember that game against you guys. It's the game where we were undefeated and uh, we ended up – wait, where were we undefeated? We were 12-0, I think. 
We lost to somebody though, I think, right? No, oh yeah, no, wait, shit, I don't know, guys. I don't even remember. We, I feel like we were undefeated that year, and that was the game where 2013 is where it came down to uh, you guys going for it at the, the end. Two-point two conversion. Didn't you guys, I, I think I heard this, you knew it was going to be one of two plays, and like, so you set up for one of them, and it ended up being the exact play, and I mean, you just stepped right in front of it and intercepted. I have no idea, but I know that that's the most stressful time to be a fan is when a team decides to go for the win, dude, that happened to us against uh, Indiana. I think a few years ago when Dwayne Haskins was a starter, man, it, they, they, they pretty much had the dude wide open. And then the quarterback for Indiana overthrew the ball and we don't, that's how we won the game, but they would have won the game if the dude was an accurate quarterback. Yeah. Those games crazy, dude. I, I don't know, man, watching sports. There's been a lot of games where, feel like you're gonna have a heart attack i'm having a heart attack like i'm freaking out like man you guys don't know i i rage when i watch us play games like this like i look like like i'm grown as hell and i look like a little baby when we're losing to teams or when it's close or i'm like dude we should be blowing this team out like like i don't know do you remember i don't know if you watched it because you guys might have been having a game that indiana game i'm talking about when Dwayne haskins was the uh starter do you remember that game uh i don't i don't remember mitch do you no that, that that game was back and forth. I, I'm I'm almost positive it was Indiana, but because Indiana, Ohio State I mean, are usually pretty close games. Wasn't there a Maryland game? Oh no, yeah, no, it was Maryland. You're right. Okay, Never yeah, mind. yeah, yeah. I want to yeah, say I remember game. someone getting like overthrown, and I was like, yeah. Oh, it was on, it was back and forth, bro. I'm like our defense, bro. I'm like stop. Like we scored, took the lead, and then with like one minute on the clock. These dudes come down the field with like such ease and score a touchdown. I'm like, how is that happening? I'm like, how do you get more? Like, I, I, it's hard watching it as a fan sometimes, man, because you're like talking so much trash about the players when you, I know it's not their fault. Like, but, but yeah, I'm like, yeah. as a fan, you see it and you're like, how are you doing this? Because one player that I, I don't think got enough hate as in his time at Ohio State was Damon Arnett. Uh, was great his senior season, but his previous few seasons, Dude, watching him play was so hard, so hard to watch. Never look back for the ball, constantly getting pass interference. I remember, I remember a lot of pass interference calls on him because he would just he would face guard people all the time. Yeah, I, I don't know. We our secondary after um the 2019 season, it was good. We still had Damon Arnett, Jeff Okuda, lost both both of them in the draft. Mm -hmm. Then last year, we had Sean Wade who got freaking burnt. Every single play of the game, dude had a couple good plays, but that's that's another situation. If he would have left the previous season mm -hmm. to go to the draft, he probably would have been a top two draft pick. Now he done screwed himself. Yeah, I'm seeing some. I'm seeing some mock drafts. He's going second round. Um, I hope so. I still hope he goes pretty high. But he he lost out on a lot of money coming back last year because he was not the player he was supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I should, uh, man, there's a lot of fan pages, man, because like, I, I don't know how long your page has been around. You're one of the only pages for that, for your team that I follow. I follow a few of you guys, but obviously I've been following you for a long time on Instagram, man. You're, mm -hmm. you're one of the more genuine, cool people on there for your team. But like I said, I was showing you those screenshots earlier. I don't know, man. People dude, in this community are crazy, dude. Like in, in all honesty, Anthony, like the whole I, I totally respect your decision to not show your face and to not show like who you are, because even for me, I mean, you have 90,000 followers. I have like 15. So you have way more people, but even Mitch and I doing the pilot and we had, we've only, this is our third episode of the pot of the podcast. We did a pilot and we did an episode two. And it was like, uh, we're talking about the final four and the Michigan UCLA game. But Anthony, I literally had people DMing me saying like, uh, bro, your nose is weird, or I don't like the way your hair looks. And it's just, it's the craziest thing. Like you said, people will send you DMs and just like attack your character and start like ripping on you. But that's, that's a thing too. Like for someone to go out of their way to try to make a comment or remark like that about you, you have to think about, well, what kind of state are they in that the only way they can like make themselves happy is by tearing you down. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't even, like, I try to keep it real with people as much as I can. I mean, you follow my page, you know. I'm not like other fan pages where I just keep it posting and boom, boom, whatever. I, yep. Man, I post my opinions on stuff. I'll post my, I just be myself on there. 
these other pages, man, like, like I said, I don't, I don't try to interact with a lot of people unless you're cool with me and me and you are cool. So we interact, but yep. I don't go in these group group chats or anything to interact with these people because like, dude, I think like the main thing, dude, I work at GameStop. People think it's insane that I work at GameStop and try to like down me for it. I'm like, bro, who cares? You know what I have? I have a job. You know what else I have? I have good credit. So, mm-hmm. well, yeah, it's just like, yo, let someone do their thing. Like, why, why do you care so much? Like, Again, uh, doing YouTube or whatnot, people people are already talking trash about about like me and Mitch, and they're saying all these things. I'm like, dude, how unhappy are you with yourself that you have to tear someone else down? Like, just let someone else do their thing, be positive, and if you have nothing nice to say, you know, just let them go, do whatever. It's yeah, just- and, a, and a funny thing is, I come to realize that a lot of these people, the worst ones, they're Ohio State fans. Like, that's the funniest part. I don't even, I don't interact with them. I don't talk to them. I try to stay like, out of all the drama on there. Bro, they're all Ohio State fans. They call me my DMs. Like, I find out later that they're Ohio State fans. I'm like, bro, how are you an Ohio State fan talking crap to me? I don't talk to you. I don't interact with you. Where, mm-hmm. where, Where's the hate that you don't like? Where, Where's the hate coming from, bro? Yeah. It's crazy, man. You just, and I mean, Mitch and I have talked about this a lot. Just, we, you can't pay attention to it. It doesn't, no, I don't. Bro. No, <laughs> you just got you got to block it out. You got to stay positive because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Like yeah. those those people are already miserable enough if they're going out of their way to say these things about about you. And when literally, I mean, like you said, you keep it real all the time. And I mean, the name of my podcast is No Cap, and that's kind of a joke. It's like my last name is Cap, and it's like you you know. But that's what we're trying to do on our channel we're trying to keep it 100 percent transparent and real all the time we're not gonna like beat around the bush have fluff we're just gonna talk about it yeah i mean that's what i try to do man i mean doing the podcast stuff i feel like um i feel like it's something that i could probably do i mean i I feel like you can get a a lot of i can get a lot of players i mean i don't want to say current players because i don't know what the college rules are because i know a lot there's a lot of college rules where people can't like current players can't get on podcasts I know recruits and stuff can because they're not playing for the school, but yep. I feel like if I try to get like a current player on a podcast, I don't think they're, I don't know if they're allowed to, but I know a lot of uh, former players that follow me that would probably get on that. It, it would probably be really interesting. I feel like it would be pretty successful. I just have to uh, not be lazy and actually do it, you know? Yeah. I mean, I'm trying to get, uh, I'm trying to get Brandon Graham on right now and I want to have him talk about, no, just his life in general, but also like about the Super Bowl, about being a captain, like winning a Lombardi, playing at Michigan and all that. Like, it'll be a ton of fun. And I mean, starting, starting anything is probably like starting a podcast. I mean, obviously we both have Instagram pages, but the, the beginning is always the hardest part because you have the least amount of resources. You have the least amount of knowledge, least amount of support. But if you just go through that struggle for like that first month six months year two years and you get through that and you build your foundation i mean it's smooth sailing from there right i don't don't even remember how it happened dude i mean i had my page i made it during the ncaa not even the basketball tournament the big 10 basketball tournament in uh i think 2013 when you know the season where ohio state lost to uh i think it was um dayton um oh yeah i remember that I mean, that's when I made the page. I thought it was cool watching the, the Big Ten tournament. I was like, man, let me just make an Ohio State page. I'm a big yeah. Ohio State fan. <laughs> I made it. Didn't do much with it. If you scroll down to my very first picture, just kind of like Instagram back in 2013 or whatever, the pictures are super blurry. They look like trash. That's it's so funny hilarious. that you say that, bro. Like, sometimes I'll go back to the start of mine, like my feed, and I'm like, yo, I wrote this. Like, these pictures are terrible. Like, <laughs> dude, everything is so much worse than it used to be and mitch and i were talking about this the other day too we're like i hope we get back to the podcast when we're on like episode a thousand and we look back on our pilot and we're like wow that was where we started yeah i mean i do that all the time dude i'll go through my old facebook feeds my old instagram feeds and i look at myself even the way i talk i'm like i'm like bro what am i saying right now right like look i look super dumb and now i'm grown <laughs> and i'm like i'm like super logical and i'm like dude I'm way smarter than I was back then because back then I looked, I looked really dumb saying what I said. I mean, I'm trying to, and it's going to come with time, obviously, but I'm trying to be more, I don't know, clear and concise with my sentences because as of right now, I bet when I'm editing this podcast, I'm going to hear myself being 
or, or saying like, like, um, 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 over and over and over again. And I mean, I hope I get to one day where, where, where I just look at it and I'm like, I can't believe I said that that many times. It starts, man. It's just the start. You guys just started. So with time, you guys are just going to get way better at it. You guys are going to have, you guys could get the super NFL Cleveland Browns legend Braylon Edwards on the podcast. Pretty sure that guy blocked me on Instagram. I don't remember why. You know how many famous people blocked me? It's crazy. I think Lamar Jackson has me blocked. <laughs> um, dude, when Lamar Jackson played at uh, Louisville, dude, I'd be on his page talking so much trash. Like, you're just a running back. You're not even a good quarterback. Dude straight up blocked me. Um, former Alabama, I think it was a linebacker. What's his name? Uh, Landon Collins. He blocked oh me. My- so many oh my po- famous people have me blocked. Even some Ohio State people, man. You know, the funny story. Ted Ginn Jr. You know Ted Ginn, obviously. Yep, yep. He blocked me on Instagram over the dumbest thing ever. I mean, it was hilarious. I, I can't even be mad at it because it was funny. So <laughs> when when the Saints when the Saints drafted Marshawn Lattimore, uh, Ted Ginn was still playing for the Saints, and I made a comment on Ted Ginn, Ted Ginn's post because he was like basically, "Oh, welcome to uh, uh, Nola or whatever," and I was all like, "Yeah, now somebody's gonna lock you up in practice." And this dude <laughs> went ahead and added me. He's like, "Oh, now you're gonna get blocked for that." I was like, "Bro, he didn't even block me right away." I was like, "Oh, I thought he was just." blowing smoke nope mm. i i got blocked oh my god that, i i got blocked devin gardner blocked me and i have no reason no idea what the reason was but jt barrett i this was oh god i started my page in february of 2017 so this was like a couple months after the whole like jt was short thing or whatever i made a post and i said jt was short and i tagged i tagged barrett and he commented on it and he said y'all salty and then he blocked me you know who I, blocked you from your guys' team? He blocked he blocked my account. And <laughs> I remember like I was showing all my friends, I was like, yo, JT Barracks. I was, I think I was a freshman or sophomore in high school. I was like, yo, JT Barrett commented on my post. You're like, show me. And I couldn't find it. And I was like, yo, he blocked me. There's no way. <laughs> yeah. Um, the dude one, it was funny. A couple, I think it was like it wasn't too long ago, it was a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. Chase Winovich. Um, oh, I think I blocked him because uh he was out, he was commenting on my stuff because I made a post where uh, he got blown up by like an offensive lineman or something and got put on his ass. And I made a post the video and tagged him. This dude started commenting on it oh, and we were going back and forth about it. I was like, ah, I might as well just block him now before he tries to uh, go out of his way to get my page deleted or something. So I was like, that's another me. scary thing too, is like these players that have verified badges, like they can do that. You gotta be careful. Yeah. I was dude. That's the one thing I always worry about waking up and my page being deleted. I was I like, got, I got a DM the other day and it wasn't in like my feed. Cause you know, when you get to like a certain amount of followers, you have requests or whatnot, but it was like your page is under review for copyright, like email us and give us money so that you won't get your page like taken oh, down. That's fake. <laughs> and I was like, dude, just stop. But I mean, I've had some pretty big, like, I don't know if you've heard of like 11 Warriors. Um, yep. Oh, yeah. Well, it's weird because when I first started my page, you know, you being younger and doing a page like this, you don't ever think about copyright rules, using no. other people's pictures. 11 Warriors puts their stupid freaking stamp on their pictures. Mm-hmm. And I guess when I first started my page, I used to post pictures of theirs. Bro, I had these dudes emailing me, threatening to have my page deleted and stuff because I was just I was young, not being smart. That's why you see me now. Whenever I post something, I always give somebody credit because I'm not trying to have somebody come at me for not giving credit. I'm like, bro, not happening. I learned my, I learned the lesson the hard way because people don't like to be friendly about copyright stuff at all. Right. And like, I mean, I use Getty images sometimes and they have their watermark on it and it's pretty like subtle. It's pretty low key, but I have people DM me like, Hey, you know, you can get like the Getty image or whatever, I'm wherever I'm getting the photo from, you can get their watermark removed. And I'm like, ah, I don't know if I want to do that though. Cause if I'm claiming it to be mine, then I'm going to get in trouble. And yeah, just do it similar, similar to uh, how I do it. Just like see where the photo came from or do it. Like, cause a lot of times on the pictures, you'll see where it says copyright or whatever. I just mm-hmm. copy and paste it Um, on your post. When you do your copy and paste, you know, where your hashtags and stuff, you've been doing that for a long time. Was that, Cause I used to do it really similar to like that. Was it something that Anthony, I used to do that maybe? I got a lot of my ideas from your page, if I'm being honest. Hey, dude, honestly, I don't think you're the only one. I'm not mad about it. Anybody can do whatever they want. I'm not going to come at you and be like, dude, you stole my idea. Um, my brother actually was looking at my page a couple weeks ago and he was going through all these other Ohio State pages. And he's like, a lot of these pages have the same layout in the same in yep. bio and stuff, just like you. I'm all like, yep. 
I'm like, I guess, man. I'm like, that's what I'm saying. I don't know why any of these pages don't like me. I had one guy that one of these Ohio State pages, I think it's, I don't even know. I don't want to say any names just in case they listen to this and they try to be all petty. But dude got his page deleted by uh, be, be NCAA copyright rules or something. I don't know. I'm assuming he was doing something that he wasn't supposed to do, not giving credit. I didn't give the guy a shout out. And people were mad at me because I didn't shout him out. I'm like, bro, I ain't associating with that. He got yeah. deleted for a reason. I don't put me in this situation where it's not on you. Yeah, that's not my problem. I'm like, I don't really shout people out unless I'm being like super generous. Because if I shout one person out, everybody Every, wants a shout out. That's another thing too. Like, I will like back to the DMs and you know where it says request. Like, you know, you look through those, delete them or whatnot. But I'll see these super small pages and. I'm like, you know what, you know, back when I started, so-and-so did this for me. So I'll, I'll throw them up on my story real quick. But as soon as you do one, everybody's like flocking to you. Like, can I get one? Can I get one? Can I get one? And it's a whole thing. But back to like how you were saying people, it looked like they were mirroring like what you did. I, I did that because I saw how successful your page was and it was blowing up. Like you, you're, I remember you were at like 25 K then you were at 30, 35, 40. And I was like, okay, if I can somehow like not exactly copy him, but sort of replicate what he's doing, I know I'll be successful. Um, so that, that was kind of the reason I did it. Cause I kind of, I looked up to your page a lot. So. I mean, social media is pretty crazy. I mean, if you go through like the different social medias, I mean, if you have a Facebook page, I don't know if you do add a link it to your uh, Instagram because I linked my Facebook page, not my personal one, but obviously like the, my Ohio state Facebook page to my Instagram Mm -hmm. in 2016, right when I started growing followers and it's got my Facebook page to over uh, like 15,000 followers on it. So I would do that. uh, If I were you while you're ahead before you got too big. um, So people can start following the Facebook page too, Mm -hmm. but Twitter, Twitter is impossible to grow on. I don't know. I don't know how people grow on Twitter. I can't even be active on Twitter. I go through it myself personally, but trying to be active on it super hard because people do not like to follow you on Twitter. Yeah. Um, and then TikTok. TikTok is easy to grow on. I mean, I literally made a TikTok page like two weeks ago. Literally, I post music, literally like uh, live performances because I'm a big music person. Yep. I, gained, I gained over, I'm almost at 100,000 followers on TikTok in like two Jeez. weeks. That's okay. So I was watching a lot of, I watch a lot of podcasts and whatnot, but a lot of the entrepreneurs that I watch that do social media, they're all saying the same thing. They're saying use TikTok to get a following and take all your followers from there and like transition them over to Instagram, transition them over to YouTube. So that's what I'm thinking. Like I'm going to post clips of the podcast, like on there and then get a following there and move those people to YouTube. It's like you're saying, man, TikTok, that that's the easiest one to blow up on. You can, you can put your Instagram right in your uh, TikTok bio where people click the little Instagram logo and bring you right to your Instagram page, dude. Yeah, bro. very easy to blow up on TikTok. Very easy. Yeah. All right. I think you know, we can talk a little bit after we stop the recording here, but I feel like we we covered a, a good amount of ground here. Um again, Anthony, I want to thank you so much for coming on, bro. Hopefully the first of many times. Uh that was good. We we had really good conversations, felt like it went pretty smooth, but I think that's going to do it for the No Cap Podcast, episode three, featuring OSU Buckeyes. Mitch, you got anything you want to add, bro? I think I'm all set. You're all set? All right. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you next week for the next episode. See you guys.